there you can see the orientation. Here's where we are here. Here was the Hopetown Earth Works, another major complex. And something that we'll see subsequently today is the idea of a large circle and then a square connected to it. Oftentimes, more than that, there's a large circle, a square, and a smaller circle. And what the video pointed out was that the dimensions of the square will fit inside the circle. It doesn't seem to be the case in this picture from 1938, an aerial photograph, but it's what the video said. And so maybe it not, doesn't apply here, but does it elsewhere. My fanciful thoughts was that unlike Cahokia, that had a population at its peak of around 20,000, most of which were right within the confines of the Cahokia complex. In other words, it was a big, sophisticated city. These people did not. They were not at all living here. No one had lived here that there's any evidence of. So they lived in little groups of two or three huts in the forest, like we're seeing here. So when they came together, for whatever motivated them, whatever structure and religion motivated them to come here, did they have the same sense that we have when we go from the rural into the urban, where for the, in a novel way they encountered this place that was so structured with man-made designs, so devoid probably of trees and other items on the ground, like our cities are compared to the forests? Perhaps another boro pit. I'm just taking a look at the river off the nature trail. Notice that there are two obviously human constructed walls, one here and another one down there forming kind of like a terracing there. I don't know if there's a third one or not. You wonder if people traveled a great distance to get here by water. Just another view point. Notice how shallow this gray, this mound is here. Looking towards the east. Here's another burrow pit. So these people, we can conclude, didn't concern themselves too much with the area outside of the perimeter, but the part inside was what was critical. So leaving probably in their day open burrow pits or continuing burrow pits for a period of hundreds of years uh, may have been no big issue at all. Notice that there's no particular alignment of these mounds that we can see, that I can see. These two young men, Squire, and Davies in the 1800s wrote the original first definitive archaeological report on the mound cultures. I had to imagine what these pieces of artwork would have looked like when new, this one of copper, and when complete. So they must have obtained copper from somewhere, knew how to smelt it into pure copper, then hammer it somehow into flat sheets in order to be able to work it. And then how did they work it so precisely? Copper ear spools, in other words, I think they pierced their ears and then expanded the hole until they could pop these babies in there. Here's some of the detail line work of it. Not sure what this is made out of, but it looks like it's stone bird. This is a bat effigy in copper. Copper turtle shells. Copper turtles. And 
another set of horns. How balanced is the shape? It's interesting to imagine the same bodies as us, only in excellent physical shape. Probably the same intelligence, except for that which may be caused by exposure to greater scope of knowledge. But yet, is that even a fair statement when you considered how intimately they knew their world? A world we're almost completely ignorant of, except as a society, but individually we are ignorant of. It's the wall art of the four of the five, no actually all five, of the sites in this area. The one we visited this morning, the one that's dead center. This illustrates the similar dimensions in these five complexes. I think we'll be able to only look at three today. It makes the point that while European cathedrals, particularly the Gothic, strove for ever increasing heights, of course the Gothic arch provided the architectural means for that. The Hopewell expanded horizontally to achieve its sense of physical greatness. This is a portrayal of Newark earthworks, but not what we could see, because I think what we're looking at here may have been in part covered by a golf course. In other words, that right-hand upper section was the golf course. And the lower section here is what I camped beside. Describing the earthen walls of the Great Square at Hopton Earthworks, now reduced to by farming from 12 feet high, 50 feet wide, to just faint perturbations in the soil surface because of plowing. Apparently these burrow pits were not just discarded or ignored burrow pits, but in fact one excavation has shown that at least one of them was clay lined, implying that it would be used to hold water. Also in the central grave, one of the mound that we're looking at right there. One of the grave sites had a layout of conch shells that exactly duplicated the arrangement of all the burrow pits around this site. So I stand corrected.